Hi, Homeworthy, I'm Gail. Welcome to my home in Michigan. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Thank you to Serena and Lily for sponsoring today's episode. Hi, I'm Gail Disner. I'm a content creator and I live here in a suburb of Metro Detroit. So I ended up in my home in a very non-traditional manner. I moved across the country in 2019. I lived in Arizona and I moved my family with two kids under two and we could not find a house anywhere. And so we found a rental house and I fell in love with the neighborhood. And so I would just drive around looking at all the houses saying, oh, they're packing up. They must be, they must be moving. Maybe that house is for sale. And um, luckily we were the very first people to come in and we had a very aggressive offer. We had crazy terms and this was before the market went crazy. And um, luckily we were able to get it with zero contingencies, a one day inspection, and kind of at that time agreed to crazy terms to get the house. It was in really rough shape, but I could just see the potential of the house. And I, when I saw it, I knew it had to be mine. So we moved in um, in the summer of 2019. So our home was built in the 1930s. It's a 1936 colonial with field stone front and brick and siding. Um, many people think that the, la the different layers of our home um, and how there's different material that maybe there was additions done. Um, that was very common where people do additions, you know, and expand over the years. But actually the basement matches this exact floor plan. And so all of the house as it sits, um, was original and it actually sits on one and a half lots which is very rare for the neighborhood so i was having a really hard time describing what my style was i would say it's kind of like this or it's kind of like that and i said i'm gonna make up my own term we're gonna we're gonna finally figure this out and so i coined the term smaximalist and that is a southern traditional maximalist smaximalist and so i have a lot of Southern influence, being from the South, um, lots of traditional design elements, pleated drapes, um, lots of wallpaper, lots of molding, and maximalist because I think a home should be layered um, with lots of layers and texture, and I'm definitely no minimalist. So um, that's a little bit about my style, and you'll see that as we go through. Um, lots of intentionality in layering textures and colors, etc. Welcome to my vestibule. Um, I actually did a lot of work in here. We had lower paneling and so we did the raised panel um, millwork in here, which is, which is really beautiful. Eventually I'll add wallpaper and then I found this beautiful piece at an estate sale. Um, I've been looking for a big statement piece right when you walk in. So the vestibule right when you come in the front door this is what greets you. And so I really wanted a big statement piece here and I definitely found it. And then also, this is one of my favorite thing about the house, um, all of the arches. And so we have an arch door, which is um, amazing right when you walk in. And then this was a flagstone. It's very casual all throughout the house. We had lower paneling and lots of areas with, with big flagstone with green and red. And so this, we did the checkerboard uh, white and gray marble, um, the Bardiglio, and it turned out really nice. So both of these pieces are very random. <laughs> um, I decided early on that I wanted to mix in modern heart, art, um, very traditional, a very traditional style, but if I feel like it can feel too old and stagnant and a little bit m like memories of visiting grandma's house. And so I really wanted to bring in some fresh modern art 
And so I found this piece and I had to have it. And then this piece, believe it or not, it was a home goods find. It's been discontinued. I have so many people ask me about this piece. I got that. It was actually in my son's nursery back when we lived in Arizona. And it was just such a statement piece. I wanted to put it in here. I joke that I only, my very first home, I didn't know what to do. And I only shopped at big box stores. And that was a huge mistake um, to not buy custom and to not shop at, you know, secondhand and thrift stores and estate sales. Um, so less now, but I love home goods. Some of my favorite pieces um, in my house are home goods, like this piece in the mirrored console in the um, living room. So I love home goods, but I am more of a secondhand estate sale shopper now. So I'm a content creator and I started the brand The Southern Gale when we moved into the house in 2019. I was just kind of documenting it more for fun. I didn't think of it as a business or a job. I just wanted to document what I was doing to the house and I thought it would be fun. I'd seen other people do similar things on Instagram and so I wanted to give it a try. And then as the years went, I gained more and more followers and businesses started to reach out and I said, okay, hold on. I think, I think this is more, I think it can be more. And so now it is my full-time job. It is definitely a business. I am very lucky to get to work with some amazing brands, um, to partner with projects throughout my home and lifestyle brands. And it's really grown into something um, unexpected. Um, I'm a very big storyteller, and so I love getting on stories daily with my followers and sharing an estate sale find or sharing um, what project I'm working on or thinking out to planning for the next project in advance or with my safety glasses and my um, you know gloves on tiling and talking about mortar consistency. And so taking them along for the ride is really fun and then um, it becoming a business was really unexpected. So last year was really my first full year um, being a full-time content creator um, and it's been a lot of fun. So now let me take you to the main hallway. This was a huge selling point in the house. I mean, look at these hallways. Look at how wide they are. You don't get wide hallways in homes. I felt like this was just so, such a statement. And this is really, other than the dining room and the kitchen, truly this is the center of the home. Our main staircase comes from here. The back staircase comes from here. When you enter, you come from here. The powder room. So this main hallway is gets so much traction. And so we actually did a couple of things to stay true to the house but to just, you know, level it up a little bit more. So we added, this was the original molding down here. It was very casual. This was all through the home. Um, and we did leave it in some places. And so we just wanted to add to it. And so we added these box molding and we did the flex. So we, ma we matched the arch. So we did the flex molding all the way around and then also added the crown molding. And then we added these beautiful hand painted wallpaper panels. Um, they're a pair and they're just so lovely and the, each one is unique they're hand painted so i mounted them and then had them framed with this um, bamboo frames and they they flank the main arch here in the main hallway and um yeah i i love this hallway so this came as a set it's a cute little bench with two chairs i have one chair on one side and then one chair in another room i'll probably eventually get these recovered in like a blue or a green. It's just a Facebook marketplace find. Um, and then he is the star, he's one of the stars of the show. One of the local churches has a garage sale and they have this room of all the fancy stuff. And so they have one room that's all the nicer fancy stuff and he was in the fancy room. Um, and he was really affordable, like 20 bucks affordable. And then I got this mar beautiful marble stand um, at an estate sale. And so I, I love how the secondhand finds have added, you know, a little, a bit more layers and a bit more refinement to the space. When I moved to Michigan, I started shopping secondhand and going to estate sales. It is a rush. <laughs> When you look online and you see something that you like, and then, and so I'm very well researched. I will research all of the pictures. I'll look at all of the pictures. I start looking on Wednesday or Thursday every week. I scout out what estate sales are coming up for the weekend. And if I don't like any, I won't go. So I always research ahead of time. I have a system that I use. 
Um, if it's a really, really good sale, let's say it's a three day sale, I go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I try to be the first one in on Friday. I try to be the last one in on Saturday. And then I try to be the first one in on Sunday. Um, I have a bid system that I use, a percentage off of each item if I really want the item, but it's like a little bit overpriced. Um, it is it is a thrill. And so when you see a picture online of something that you love and you can't wait, the, the picture, the piece in my entryway that I showed you, that was one of the pieces. I saw it online at an estate sale and I was like, I was driving there and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope it's there. I hope it's there. And then I went in and my heart was literally racing and it was just right there and no one had taken it. And I wasn't the first one there. And I just grabbed the tag and I was like, I got and it's just the the thrill and the excitement that it brings when you get an item not only at a great price but this one of a kind you'll never be able to buy that item you can't go to a store and buy that item it's just um it, it it's thrilling <laughs> like i said this is the center of the home so the front door the powder room our main staircase um, which another thing that I really love about the house is a lot of basements are very closed. It's behind a door and you're like, oh, the, the creepy dark basement. But here it's an open staircase that just wraps around. So we have kind of this double staircase that goes down. Um, I did the animal print from Stark Carpet on the stairs. And funny story, we have five staircases in our house. We have two up, two down and then one to the attic. And so the animal print runner um, is on three of the staircases in the house. One going up here, one going down, and then for line of sight, this is the back staircase. Um, when the home was built, um, they had a maid and a butler. And so that is the maid and butler's corners, which makes it really nice for guests because now I am the maid and the butler. Um, but for guests, when my parents come or when friends come in for football games, um, they can have their own little private area and private staircase that leads to the kitchen. So when we came to look at the house, I joked that I must have been wearing rose colored glasses because all I could see was the potential. All I could see was the end product and how beautiful it could be. And then I go back and I look at before pictures and I'm like, did we really did did okay what did what was i thinking um and not in a bad way the house just needed so much work so there was vines growing through the windows there was carpet over the original hardwood floors upstairs um a lot of deferred maintenance um, we had to clear cut the entire yard um, we painted every surface and sanded down the hardwoods and restained them just to move in, really just to make it livable, replaced every light switch, replaced every electrical outlet, replaced every light fixture, really just to make the house livable. So we spent about four months just getting it ready to move in with really zero renovations. We didn't change anything. We didn't do anything. We just made the house clean and um, and ready for our family. And then once we got in, I started customizing the house. So custom drapes, wallpaper, um, lots of molding and millwork throughout. Um, and I've done a lot of fun projects, lots and lots and lots of wallpaper, stair runners, painting. Um, I've even tiled, I'm a big DIYer, so um, there's I've made cabinets, I've tiled. I just kind of go room by room and, um, and execute. So let me take you into my dining room, one of my favorite rooms in the house. Um, this room is so special for so many reasons. This was the very first room I did in the house. It had the low paneling. The only thing we kept were the doors. So the paneling, similar to the main hallway, just kind of wrapped around here and it had green scraped plaster. Even over the light switches were green scraped plaster that had these lines in the plaster. Um, and I could just see the potential of this room. So to go to the kitchen, to go to the living room, everyone walks through this hallway and this is where all of the, you know, this is where all of the, the dinners happen. This is where the birthday dinners happen. This is where Easter happens. This is where Christmas dinner happens. And so I really wanted this room to be really, really special. Lots of inspiration online. Um, and again, I did, instead of just similar to the main vestibule, a raised panel, very intricate, very high-end millwork. Um, I did hire, I am a DIYer, but I did hire a finished carpenter to do this. It, this room took him four months to do. And so he did a raised panel with an inset molding, um, a ledge and a crown in here, as well as adding crown molding. And then um, he also added these, these built-in hutches are just, it just screams old house charm. 
a lot of new construction that I'm seeing um, is trying to add in charm and I've seen um, corner bookcases coming back. And then we added the crown there as well. So then um, when it was all done, the molding was all done, I decided to wallpaper. I wallpapered the whole thing and then I decided I didn't like the wallpaper. And so then I took it all back down and then I put up this wallpaper. This is, it's much more me. It was meant to be. Um, this is the Schumacher Hydrangea Drape. It's, it's a textured wallpaper. Um, you might not realize that from afar, but it, it does add dimension to the room. And then it has hydrangeas. I'm a hydrangea queen. I love hydrangeas. I have, I think I have over 40 hydrangea plants at my house, probably more than that. Um, and so this is really me. It's really me. And so then we got um, all of the furniture in here is uh, vintage from an estate sale. And so I actually um, got the set and then had the chairs we covered in a custom blue fabric to match the wallpaper. Um, and then this chair, this table and chair set is just a faux bamboo, which adds so much. I mean, the bamboo detail and the cane detail in the chairs. It even has the little brass inlays. Um, and then it, it came with multiple leaves and then it also came with our buffet pieces. This was a huge find. I was actually only looking for chairs. I bought this beautiful marble table from Restoration Hardware and then I was looking for chairs and I didn't want like a cloth chair. I wanted something unique and I found the chairs and they would not sell me just the chairs. And I was like, I don't want your table. I don't want your buffets. And they were like, sorry, it's a set. And so um, I got the chair, I got it all home. And I was like, I'm sending the marble table back. I'm going vintage. And it, it worked out. It's really beautiful. Um, lots of other custom and estate sale finds. So this light fixture, I have this collection all through my home. Uh, this is the Gramercy collection from Visual Comfort. I have them all throughout sconces and other, and, and people look at it as they're gilded. It's supposed to resemble fixtures that were built, that were made in the 1930s, um, which our home is 1930s. And so it's very in line with what the home would normally, normally have. And so it's really funny to see people say like, is that original or did you add that? And the fact that they don't quite know, it makes my heart sing. It feels like, it makes me feel like I did a really good job. The fact that they, they don't know if it was original or if I put it in. So we did custom drapes in here to match this linear leaf pattern in the hydrangea drape wallpaper. And so I found this fun little trim that emulated the, the leaf pattern. So we worked that in and, and kind of almost like a little brass detail with the, with the gold thread. Um, and then these are my favorite. People don't realize when they come in person and they've seen this room, they say, oh my gosh, those lamps are huge. Um, and they are, they're huge. I mean, you can see I'm five, seven. So these, these lamps are huge. Um, they were custom made for an estate in Chicago, an interior local interior designer had them and they were actually fruit topiaries that were made into a lamp. And so they drilled through and made the fruit topiaries and had these custom shades put on. And then I have accented with some other fruit topiaries that I've got at a different estate sale at a different time. Um, and these are, I feel like these make the room. I thought when I saw them in person, you know, a normal lamps like this tall. And so this huge lamp, I was like, I don't know if that's going to look right. And then I put them in here and I was like, they're home, they're home. They belong in here. So this rug, um, it, it kind of emulates a sisal jute natural fiber rug, but it's actually indoor outdoor because I have little kids and a dog. And if you spill something, you can just rinse it right out. And so that's, that's my little tip. If you want something really beautiful, but it's in a high, high traffic area, um, indoor, outdoor. <laughs> um, I love all the vintage pieces. I love working them in. I don't even know if I registered for Wedding China. I'm not even sure. And so um, when, when we got the house and we finished it, I really wanted really statement China that matched our house, that looked like it was custom ball for this room to eat dinner in this room. And so I found, um, this Wedgwood Queensware in violet, it's a light blue. And I found a full 12 piece place setting, um, which is just, I mean, the, I don't know if you can see this detail, it's raised, um, a 12 piece place setting at an estate sale. I just like, it makes my heart so happy. So this is what we eat all of our fancy meals on when we have nice dinners. 
we will use the Wedgwood um, Queensware and it came with all of these serving bowls. And I just, I can't, I can't. To buy this new or to find a full vintage set is so rare. You can find a one piece place setting or you can find a teacup on eBay, but to find a full place setting, and it's so funny, I asked how they got this because the estate sale, they didn't really have any good stuff. I saw this and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. It wasn't even the first picture. It was like picture number 50. And I was like, I have to go. What if they have it? It was like, the doors had been open for 10 minutes. I got there 10 minutes after the start. I was like, there's no way it's gonna still be there. And it was there. No one was even looking at it. And I got the whole set for like $500. And like one place setting is like a lot. So it was a really good steal. It was a really good find. And it literally, it was made for this room. <laughs> It's incredible. So I love that. And then I also have some desert rose, which I have so much from my grandmother. It's the hand painted China from when she got married. And so she gifted me um, when she passed. I got the um, all of her desert rose. So it's hand painted. That's been in my family for a really long time. All of the desert rose. So you can see how much I have. Um, it, it completely fills up this banquette and I've over, uh, overflowed into the other storage cabinet. Um, like I said, this was my grandfather my grandmother on my dad's side, um, all of her vintage pieces like this one, it's actually cracked, but like I can never get rid of it <laughs> because it's so beautiful and so special. Um, I mean, everything, she has every single piece. I don't even know. I, I mean, it, if they made it, she had it. So um, it's, a, it's a beautiful collection of the hand painted, it's all hand painted Desert Rose, so. That's really, really pretty. And then my other grandmother, let me see if I have it here. She gifted, it's in the other one, let me show you. This is so funny. Everyone that knows me knows I do not like the color red. I don't decorate with the color red. I don't wear the color red. Red is not me. But my grandmother had her Christmas china. So at Christmas, I pull out the red. <laughs> for my grandmother, my Mimi. Um, it has the red hollies on it and it has the little um, gold rim. So that's a really special piece. So I am overflowing. And then you can see actually my other china. I said that I wasn't going to collect china, but it seems as though I am. Um, my spring china, I worked on a collaboration um, last year. So this is, this is a huge benefit of being a content creator. I worked with William Sonoma last year um, to set my table for spring. So we have all of this like Easter and I did the um, cabbage lettuce plates. So, so special. And so have a full setting of all of the uh, cabbage wear. It's so beautiful. I love the green, green and blue. Those are my colors. I do love to host. Um, I keep telling people I'll host more when my kitchen's done. So we'll, we'll look at that later. Um, but I do host people in here because my kitchen is not done. So I'll set up um, ice buckets and drinks um, on this back buffet. And um, it, it's been great. It's been great for neighborhood get togethers, uh, for book club and social club. It's been great for family dinners and being able to host extended family in here. Um, we are an NFL family and um, we do have lots of visitors. And so we have lots of overflow that a small kitchen table will not fit. So this has been a really great space to have our whole extended family um, when, they, when they fly in. To, to have everybody in this room. And uh, we always, uh, people always say, are you traveling for the holidays? And I'm like, no, we don't travel for the holidays. It's NFL season, it's football season. We're always host, which makes it really lovely. So I actually host every holiday except, um, except 4th of July, except 4th of July. So every Thanksgiving is in this room, every Christmas is in the room um, because we're hosting. So I love this table setting. I absolutely love decorating with topiaries. So my local um, florist has these beautiful topiaries and these beautiful pots. And then this is actually a preserved boxwood. So this is not alive, it's been preserved. And it had this really crazy green grass stuff. And so I put this really nice moss on top to really elevate it. And so I kind of flipped it. I did a little DIY on my home goods find. And then a local florist did this beautiful flat, you know, flat long arrangement. Um, and I love all the greens, the green, green and white in here. You would think, you know, blue or neutral, but the green and white in here 
works really, really well. So I have always been a DIYer. I remember when my parents were building our house, I was probably in middle school and we were in this temporary housing situation and I wanted everything to match. I, I had lime green shelves and I picked lime green pillows and a coordinating teal comforter and I wanted it and I did white drapes and I just wanted it to feel like my space. And so I, my earliest memory is, you know, redecorating my super temporary um, living situation right there in middle school. And from there I moved on and I did a two paint process as a high schooler, did this two paint process of refinishing the walls in my bedroom and my parents just kind of put up with it. And my dad was very handy. While he didn't do many house projects, um, you know, if we needed the oil changed, he changed the oil. If we, you know, if you needed something fixed, you did it yourself. Um, and so definitely growing up in that environment, it was, I, I can figure it out kind of attitude. And so being a homeowner, um, my first couple of projects in Arizona, I took on, you know, peel and stick wallpaper. Um, I did a board and batten in the dining room. I kind of dipped my toe into bigger projects, um, but I could have never imagined where I am today, which is, you know, I gutted a whole bathroom, I laid a new subfloor, I'm tiling it, I waterproofed it. It's been really fun to learn and really to inspire others to do molding and learn how to use a nail gun and learn how to use a wet saw and learn how to use a miter saw and add all these tools to my collection. It's been really fun not only for me to learn, um, but to also share that with my followers. So now let me take you into the living room. I always joke that my claim to fame in the living room is this wallpaper. It's actually peel and stick wallpaper. This room is really, believe it or not, this is kind of a band-aid. <laughs> it's such a beautiful room and I love this room and I love all the details that we've incorporated. This is just not the long-term plan for the room. And so um, that's really when my Instagram kind of like started seeing a bunch of traction is when I, um, when I started putting up the grass cloth wallpaper. It's just like a peel and stick, easy, um, easy, very approachable wallpaper to put up. It's a giant sticker, um, but I love everything that we've done in this room. I love our big coffee table. I love our big oversized, extra deep Chesterfield couches. Um, I love our wood burning fireplace and I got actually this fireplace vendor. This is such a good find. This is probably my best estate sale find to date. Um, this is the Scully and Scully fireplace vendor. It, they were made in England and you can still buy them today. And it, I got such a good deal on it. And people will go, what is that thing by the fireplace? And it's a fireplace fender. And so you can sit on it, but it still protects the logs from rolling out for fire safety. Um, so this is awesome. I, I, I love this fireplace vendor. Um, you can see the original dental molding on the fireplace um, as well as the crown molding. Um, so I love those original details and we've worked in lots of antiques. We didn't want everything to be new. So whether it be the fireplace fender or the little brass bucket that holds the fire starters, multiple chess pieces around. This is a true antique. Um, I got this piece from a local antique dealer. This piece is probably 16 pieces. <laughs> Everything comes apart. It fits in like a puzzle. Um, it has the, um, it has wavy glass and it has all of this inlaid brass and all of these brass details. Um, it, it's just incredible. It, it's really an incredible piece. Um, it is 17th or 18th century vitrine. Um, so yeah, and I love the little finials, the little brass finials on the top. Really lovely. So I decorated this vitrine with all kinds of special goodies. Like you would normally decorate a bookcase. So I really wanted built-ins in this room. And we have the double doors leading out on either side. So we, not double, but we have two doors leading out to the sunroom. So normally, you know, bookcases would flank the fireplace and we had doors right there. And so there, and I didn't really want to get rid of the molding. And so it's very conflicted. So I got this antique piece really as a display case. That's, that's what it is. And I have these little figurines that I found. I have this charcoal sketch of my little boys. I have some, some, uh, modern art. I have wedding photos, a little orchid, just some really pretty, like 
things that you would normally use um, bookcases for to display some decorative books, some books that I love, and just like some family mementos. This is actually the set that's in the hallway. So um, we have a one little settee and then two um, chairs. So those are really cute. Again, just a really inexpensive Facebook marketplace. I'll show you my favorite home goods find ever, ever. And it's this mirrored um, console table. I got this actually when we were living in Arizona. Like I've tried to, I've tried to find it. I can't find it. It's, it's beautiful. It's such a statement piece. It's so unique. Um, it's got, you know, some distressing. And then these actually have a really fun story behind them. So these six botanical prints, there's a hotel in Michigan called the Grand Hotel. Um, it's in Mackinac Island. And at one point they had Dorothy Draper come in and redesign the whole hotel. And there's this little hidden store um, kind of down the way, tucked back where they sell things from the hotel. They'll sell, you know, things from the gift shop. They'll sell decor. They'll sell, you know, maybe this was a set of 12 and some got damaged. And so there was, you know, six left or whatever. And then they'll sell them um, in the store. And so I got these from the Grand Hotel. These were displayed in the Grand Hotel. It's such a historic hotel here in Michigan. And so they came, they were hanging in the halls of the Grand Hotel and now they're here. So I think that's a really cool story. I went for the first time this last summer and I saw them and had to have them. So in here, um, the challenge with any room like this is it's really long and skinny um, and, and it's really narrow. So it's long and narrow. And so I really wanted couches off of the wall I wanted couches to face each other, but it's a little bit of a tight opening. And so I wanted some armchairs that weren't too oversized to fit. And these wound up being perfect. Um, we have uh, even have enough room to put a little table in between. So we got these big arm roll, you know, very ornate Chesterfield couches. And so I wanted a more sleek design armchair for this room. And of course I had to go blue to match the wallpaper. Um, and they turned out really nice. We paired it with a lot of neutrals. Um, I do love color, but every wall in my house is white. All of the molding is white. Um, I have white couches and I have a white coffee table. So I do love white as neutrals and then accenting with drapery and accenting with chairs. Um, and so I love this big statement coffee table. It's, it's over four feet long, it might be five feet long. Um, I worked in some color. Uh, some green um, with our patterns here with our drapery and then I have some more vintage artwork from estate sales I got this chess piece from an estate sale plant is a Home Depot special I went one day when it was snowing and I said I know what'll make me happy a plant so got a plant um, and then I got this beautiful bench with this silk fabric, actually. Um, I, I don't even wanna know how much that would cost to have it made brand new. I got this at an estate sale as well. So lots of estate sale finds in this room. These sconces that flank the fireplace are part of the Gramercy collection, the same as the dining room and the sunroom that I showed you. I have this collection all through my home. It's this really pretty distressed mirror with a living finish uh, brass detail. And I just, I love it. They're so beautiful and then I paired it with some uh, just timeless brass candlesticks and some really uh, fun candles. So let me show you one of the favorite rooms in my house. There's two with high gloss and that is um, my powder room. Come look. So the high gloss sells everyone. Everyone loves the powder room. I did this beautiful wallpaper bird and thistle. This comes in a couple of colorways. I love the green and then I paired it with a high gloss green paint on all of the trim. Um, this room also had flagstone, which was just not very fitting for my personal style. So I did a white marble in here with a new sink with all of these brass details um, and all brass accessories um, paired with a little bit neutral, like a Roman shade, just to kind of tone it down and some more natural elements in here. Um, and this, this room is kind of divided up into two, but we treated it as one room for cohesiveness. So the powder room, there's really kind of like a powder your nose area and a, a washroom area. And um, this, the, I feel like this is always a crowd favorite with the high gloss. It's, it's a really beautiful green. We have two rooms in our home that are really more like dark and cozy. This is one of those rooms because instead of a traditional light fixture in here, I opted for 
a brass fixture. So the light fixture actually has brass chandelier shades as well. So the whole shade is metal, which is a really fun touch. So this I feel like is one of the statement pieces from the exterior of the home, this round window. And I love that they put all of the grids in. Um, and this is actually in the stone portion of the house. And so on the exterior, it's a, it's a circle window out of the stone, which is really beautiful. I have another high gloss room to show you, the mud room. It's another crowd favorite and it's also green. So I'll show you that now. Welcome to my mud room. Um, this room is Instagram's favorite room in my house. Um, I love this room. I opted for the really high gloss paint. This is Fine Paints of Europe, Holland Lack Brilliant 98. This is a mirror-like finish. Um, it took a lot of time. So I DIY'd this room, I tiled. This is a heated floor. Um, this was an old covered porch with a milk chute and a little bell. Um, we found the milk chute when we were tearing out the old locker. So that was cute. Um, and I just gutted this room and started off fresh. We insulated and raised the floor. We insulated and lowered the ceiling. This is a flat roof. So this room got shorter, but it's still huge. Um, and I just wanted this room to be ultra luxe and glam, which I feel like is opposite of maybe what a, we, what you think about as a mudroom. But my thought was when we come in, you know, from a long day at school or we come in from shopping or we come in from whatever, this is the room that we step in. So guests enter in the vestibule, but we as a family, we enter through this room. So this is in the very back, tucked in the back of the house. Um, and this is how we enter our home. So I wanted beautiful marble floors. I wanted this to instantly feel like home. I didn't want this to just kind of be grungy in the back. I wanted this to just be this beautiful space that would welcome us home. So I have a heated floor in here and the checkerboard marble. Everyone has their own locker and has a door so that it always looks clean and tidy. I'll, let's see if mine looks tidy. <laughs> um, some coats in there. Um, and then I did this, um, I did a shelf inside and then I had a carpenter cut out this detail. So he cut out this detail in the flat part of the door and then I made it into a door. I did all of the painting and then we accented in these little finger pulls, which I thought would be really easy for the kids. And then I, I love on all of my uh, door handles all through the home, I did a brass back plate. So it's the lever and then on the back of it, there's a plate of brass. And so I thought this really emulated it nicely to give us a big pop of jewelry on the cabinets and the brass detail and then the finger pulls. And then we did the cups on the bottom. Again, a big brass detail. Um, I did a lot of really fun. I took some design risk in here, right? Cause it's just kind of a one-off room. And so I actually wallpapered this little header board that was, you know, that was already here. So this, this bigger board, the stripes, that's wallpapered. And then um, I did lattice boards on the ceiling. So it's just a plywood ceiling. And then I added lattice boards. And then to cover the transition from the wallpaper to the lattice, I actually used um, fabric. And so I took the fabric from all of the custom drapes and I wrapped the fabric um, in, I wrapped the molding in fabric and then I put that um, all along the ceiling as just another little fun pop of detail. I also added fabric to this mirror. This was just a plain white mirror that I actually got at Bed Bath & Beyond, believe it or not. I um, added this little brass, I nailed on this little brass uh, plate and then I added, I, I painted it coordinating colors and then I added this velvet to the bottom to just really tie it all in together and make it feel ultra luxe and ultra custom. I opted for these really oversized sconces with where you saw a lot of metal, where you saw a lot of brass because these it's all brick walls. This was an old enclosed side porch with a milk chute. And so I wanted just this, some statement sconces and some brass on here. So I opted for these brass sconces and then it has a little Greek key detail. And we finished it off with a green chandelier shade to tie in all of the green. Um, I actually had a different chandelier in here, but it, it hung too low and we were hitting our heads. <laughs> um, I put this flush mount in, the semi flush mount, and we have those all through the upstairs. Um, and so I tied that in 
down here as well. And then this bench cushion, it's all family friendly perennial fabric. We customized it um, with a D for Disner. And this is very lived in. This is what it normally looks like. It has little fingerprints and dirt on it. Um, it doesn't look like that on Instagram, but it looks like that in real life. Um, and what we did was I picked out um, a really beautiful uh, monogram design and I took it to a company that does applique. And so I had this applique applied with my matching fabric, with the with the matching drape fa fabric. <laughs> I took the drape fabric, we used the drapery fa fabric to make the applique on this white fabric. And then I had a seamstress um, cut the fabric into a cushion and then, a, and then the welt here is also the matching um, fabric. So this is ultra custom, it just unzips to go in the wash. It's all family friendly fabric. And it's just nice for when you, you know, put your shoes on, you can just open up the drawer and get your shoes and sit right here um, on the bench. So white in a mudroom with two little boys and a dog is probably not everybody's first choice, but it's actually held up amazing. It's been almost two years and it's it, it's held up amazing. I've only had to wash it once. It's probably, it's probably about time for that second wash. So for the drapes, I just picked out this beautiful velvet. So it's really heavy, really luxe, really heavy fabric, um, but it's green. And then I added this tassel trim. So my local seamstress made these and we did a pinch pleat to keep it really formal. And then an artist actually reached out to me while I was doing this room and wanted to show me this artwork that she thought would go perfect in this room. And I was like, okay, send it. And my heart dropped when she sent it because they're magnolias. And I'm originally from Mississippi the Magnolia State. And so unknowingly, um, really because of this artist, I was able to kind of bring in a piece of Mississippi um, to my home here in Michigan with the Magnolias, which fit in literally perfect in this space. So next, let me take you to the office, which is a dark, moody room. Let's go. So this is our home office. We have the knotty pine walls and I lost this battle. I wanted to paint them. I felt like this is not a log cabin. Like, what are we doing? And my husband was like, I really, I really love it. I think we should keep it. And that was 100% the right call. That was the right call. So this is our earthy, warm tone, kind of manly room. Um, we have historic Detroit prints. So this is from an artist that, you know, these are all historic prints from the war and from making the Model T. So we wanted to do really warm, cozy vibes in here. I opted for a plaid. So this is a Ralph Lauren fabric. We did a Euro pleat in here instead of a pinch pleat, a little bit more refined, a little more modern-esque. Um, and then we did a matching pillow and then I actually got this at an estate sale. And so we put the blue velvet on the bench cover and then we did a blue wool Greek key carpet in here, um, custom cut rug and just very, you know, earthy tones, warm tones, um, historic prints, um, just made this room really fun. And you'll see lots of history things in here. We have, you know, um, I think that's old Tiger Stadium. Um, again, model teas and, and, and old, um, old beer deliveries and some of the art, um, beautiful draperies. We have, uh, lots of footballs. We have a record player. Um, these sconces were actually, um, these are just like a faux bamboo sconce. And so, uh, these were like a creamish white color thrown in the basement at an estate cell. They were plug in and we got them rewired to be hardwired. And so now when you turn on the light, these, these operate and then I um, painted them just like a, a navy blue uh, gloss for this room. Um, this we got professionally framed. This is a gift to my husband for one, for, I don't know when I got it for him, but it's early 1900s. I'm blanking on the exact year, but it's an old parade flag. Um, and so we got it and, and framed it. And so that kind of just sets the Americana, you know, Ralph Lauren, uh, vibes for this room. The built-in bookcases that flank, um, the fireplace here, we just have a collection of old books and 
you know, things from Lions games, this little Barry Sanders, when they did Barry Sanders in, in bronze, they made a bronze statue for him. They did like mini ones at the games. Um, we have footballs um, that my husband has collected over the years from working in football, a record player. So this is like a mini speakeasy in here. You know, you can have a drink and turn on the record player and it's a whole vibe. Okay, Willie's gonna join us for this. So this is kind of like a little hidden thing if you want it to be. It's a globe that spins, but it also opens and you can put drinks <laughs> in there. So it's a little, it's a little liquor cabinet. <laughs> so that's a fun little vintage-esque touch. Probably my favorite feature of the home, um, and I think it really separates new construction from an old house is we have super wide hallways and we have all of these arched openings. And so from the moment that you walk through the vestibule into the main hallway, you see all of these arches. There's an arch door and they're really wide hallways and it's just gracious in space. And I feel like new construction and a lot of the homes you go in, it's really tight when you go in the front door. And this home just like welcomes you and is like, welcome home. And um, those things are hard to change um, in an existing home. And so the bones of this house are just so good. And I love all the natural light. Um, it, it's really incredible on a sunny day. I feel like I have to wear sunglasses in the sunroom because it is so sunny in the house. So now let me take you upstairs to the bedrooms. So welcome to my bedroom. Um, I absolutely love this room. It was a huge labor of love. I took a lot of design risk in this room. Um, lots of layers, lots of texture, and just very warm and cozy. Um, so I did a double lattice on the ceiling, lattice boards. And so instead of just one, like in the mud room, it's two and two. Um, all on the ceiling and so that was fun. That was a fun project and so I did this I did this whole room myself personally. So I did the lattice ceiling and then I did um, this linear wallpaper. You know, it's not just stripes. It has this little scallop edge on it which is just kind of really softens it and going up the eaves of the house was a challenge because I didn't know where to stop the wallpaper. Where is the ceiling? Where is the wall? Where does it end? And so I decided to take it up and I felt like it draws your eye up. And so this is a printed grass cloth. So this pattern is printed on real grass. Um, and this, this paper is, is a challenge to install. Um, but worth it because it is, it's grass. It's a natural texture and it's just, it turned out even better than I can, could have imagined. And then I tied in that exact pattern. So the striped pattern on the wallpaper is also the striped pattern on the back of our bed canopy on the drapery. And then all of our drapery in the room, we use this uh, tulip design on the drapes. And then I also brought that exact um, um, pattern in on our bed canopy as well, along the top of the cornice, as well as the sides. Um, and then I tied in this custom velvet trim, not only on the drapery, so it's on all of the drapery, um, which is really nice and luxe but then I tied it into our custom pillow as well. So I tied in the tulip fabric in the pillow, in the cornice, and in the drapery, and then I tied in the, the fabric as well um, on the pillow, so that's really fun. For this piece at the end of the bed, this was a vintage find. It was just covered in a cream standard fabric, and so I did a velvet um, fabric here on the bench to just kind of bring in some green, and then I used the same green fabric um, as the trim on the cornice. So I really like repeating pattern and repeating usage of fabrics. It's kind of a common theme to really tie it all together. Uh, we did a custom cut rug with a green trim. Again, it, the, the, uh, the custom cut rug is very plain, but I wanted to give it just a little bit of an edge, just a little bit of um, an extra design pop. And so that's why we added the green. The chest on both sides, I found it in the state cell. They were actually in pretty rough shape. So I cleaned those up with um, 
a little oil product. And then these are Frederick Cooper lamps. One of my friends talked me into getting these. I was like, these lamps, they're like, I don't know. I don't know about the lamps. And then I got them home and I was like, how could I ever live without these lamps? They're amazing. And so I love, I, I love lamp. I love the lamps. Um, they're really beautiful. I have the marble base and gilded with this cute little fringe. Uh, shape. The lamp's great. I have a couple more surprises for you in here. These chairs are custom Cheryl chairs with Count and Tout. They're like the most like plush, plush, amazing chairs ever. Um, knew these chairs would be about $4,500 each. And I got these for $300 each um, at an estate sale. And I was, I was working on this room. I was looking online for chairs every single day. I was, had ordered fabric and I could not find anything that would go perfect with this grass cloth and the tulip. And I'd already started installing the wallpaper. And so everything had to match the wallpaper. And then I found these chairs. And so it was meant to be. Um, I had this piece custom commissioned. I had this piece commissioned by an artist. Um, the same artist um, that I used in my hallway for the modern art. I thought it was a really nice touch um, to again, kind of have some ab abstract, a little bit more modern um, element in such a tradition, a heavy traditional um, space. Love the art. And then here I have a little surprise for you. Um, I found this little piece on Facebook Marketplace. I'd been looking for something similar to this for a while. I put the tulip fabric on the inside so that it just kind of looks... Um, like a like a cabinet and then this is where the tv lives in our room we don't watch much tv in here but it's a nice little nice little hideaway um and, oh and then i lined the insides here with um uh little boards with the uh, grass cloth um uh, paper so everything matches the lines actually if you stand back the lines on the boards actually perfectly align with the wallpaper on the walls. That's how type A I am. So um, you'll see lots of wallpaper details as well. I'll show you this corner. Um, everything from the vents, all of the vents are wallpapered perfectly in even the return vent. Oh, this is a weird thing to show you, but as a DIYer, I'm very proud of myself. If you, if you would like to look at how well that vent is um, hidden. This is hand painted wallpaper. Uh, the same designer, Gracie, as downstairs. Um, and this is their petite collection. And so I framed this in a really oversized chunky frame to um, have some, some framed art in this room as well. Um, and then we have two lithographs in here that were done, I don't know how long ago, and then they were hand colored. So we, behind each lamp, we have um, these beautiful lithographs, which are just stunning estates all over Europe. It's very cozy. I was like, it's either gonna drive us crazy because it's so busy, or it's just gonna be really cozy and comforting. And luckily it was cozy. As a DIYer, they have these little challenges online one of the challenges, there's many little competitions or room makeovers you can do, um, but I like to give myself a, a, a timeline. And so what, this room, as, as well as my other son's room, was part of the one room challenge where you make over a whole room in eight weeks, start to finish. In eight weeks, you finish the room. And so I like that because it really forced me to to focus on this room and not get pulled in other directions. Oh, I need drapes for this room. Oh, I need to order this for the other room. For eight weeks, I did nothing but work on this room. And so I, I really, um, I wanted it to be like done. I would, I didn't want in the end of eight weeks, I didn't want there to be a to-do list of things that I had to come back and finish. I wanted it to be completely done and we could just move into this room and be happy. And so, um, I, I hustled to get the wallpaper and all the fabric. I made the cornice myself. So I cut all of the boards. I routered out the board for the design. I jigsawed out the, the little cut pieces to make the cornice. Um, luckily I can't sew because then it would have taken me way too much time if I had to make the drape. So luckily, I say luckily I can't sew. Um, I hired that out. And um, yeah, I just wanted this room to be completely done, cozy, lived in, like I had been decorating this home and this room for years. 
um, all in a matter of eight weeks. You'll notice all the bedding in here has these scallops. And so um, I did the double scalloped on the coverlet and the duvet cover. A little bit of a feminine touch, but just enough to add a little more character, a little more charm. Same, at, same with the pillows and the shams. So I love the scallop details on the sham instead of just a straight edge. It's one more layer of texture and design and color in the room. So now let me take you to another room that I did in just eight weeks, my son's room. Uh, let's go. So this is my son's room. This is deemed the train room. So we have lots of little train details when he was little, he loved trains. Um, so we have lots of details. Okay, Willie's gonna join us again in here. Um, so this room was a total transformation. Um, the only thing that we left was the baseboards. <clears throat> so first I added this chair rail, and then I added the box molding on the top and the bottom, as well as the crown molding. Um, we did a custom cut rug in here with all of the stars, and then we paired that opposite the ceiling um, for the star wallpaper. So that's a really fun touch. Um, and then we worked in lots of train art and lots of customizations. The bed is actually uh, my grandmother's bed from her house. So we worked in that vintage element of an old double bed at grandma's house. Um, and then we worked in all of the train art. Um, and then again, just some really custom details with this really cute lampshade. It has this gathered kind of pleated uh, raw edge here, almost like a ruffle. And so I had, I found two of these at an estate sale. And so they were the perfect spot in here for the blue. Um, even though it's a boy's room, I did the scalloped in here again. Uh, and this is actually a two-tone scalloped and we matched that with an applique. So we took some blue fabric and did the applique and then worked that in to the custom bench cushion here and did that as the cording. Um, so we did four custom Roman shades in here, cordless Roman shades. We did the striped with the camel and white striped and the blue pom-pom detail. And then we matched those to the um, little window seat um, striped and then we matched the cording to the applique on the pillows. So lots and lots of just well thought out details. Um, funny story with, about wallpaper again is this room, I actually started wallpapering the ceiling. It's an old house, none of the walls are even, no, nothing is square, nothing is plumb. Um, and I started wallpapering and it looked really, really bad. It was bubbling up off the ceiling and I just, I think it was, a. It, it, I got about halfway through wallpapering the ceiling by myself and um, it was not going well. And so I had to take it all down, re-sand the ceiling, and it was these little bitty stars was the original design. And so I was really bummed because I couldn't use the paper that I wanted to use, um, and I had not picked out a rug yet. So I found this paper, I started installing it, and then I found this rug. And proportionally, the stars on the ceiling are about the same size as the stars on the rug, so it was really meant to be, the stars aligned, if you will, um, because it was really meant to be. Um, to work in all the star details. Um, I'll show you a couple other pieces. Um, this is from the 1960s, 1970s. Uh, this is Henry Link Valley High. Um, this was a collection that Henry Link did and they were kind of yellow in tone with real brass poles. And they're kind of hard to find, vintage pieces on the market, and I found two. Um, I found one, this piece had been painted and then the other piece was in original form. And then I painted them this beautiful blue, blue dragon. I painted them this beautiful blue color, um, which was kind of, it was a hard thing to do because blue walls, um, which is, I, I know everybody's gonna wanna ask paint color. This is Sherwin-Williams Sleepy Blue at 50% color matched to the Benjamin Moore Advanced Line Satin Paint. <laughs> Um, and this, and the blue dragon, uh, paint, uh, I found that it was, it was kind of hard, but what I did was I took the fabric and the cording. I got the color the closest I could to the cording color. And I painted both of the, uh, uh, case pieces in here, the blue dragon. So I'll show you another one. We have a second one over here. And this was a dresser and mirror combo. And they're both painted in the exact same blue. Um, we did really nice, um, custom monogram, uh, storage baskets with the little scallop detail there and just some little display pieces. Again, we have more train art 
Um, and then we also, also found this at an estate sale. This is a train stamp collection. So this is not our collection, but just a, a vintage piece of art that I found with uh, all train stamps, which is really cute. And then a railroad crossing um, lamp for the full train theme in here. So I actually used this exact desk um, as a getting ready area. It's a vanity with a mirror. Um, I used this um, in my closet for a really long time. And then I found this huge desk at an estate sale and it was hand carved and I had nowhere for it to go. And so I switched. So my son got my leftovers. He was asking for a desk in his room. And so this is the perfect um, desk for a child. It's, it's, it's smaller and compact and fits in the corner of his room nicely. And so um, he, he has all of his little art supplies in here. So I'll take you to my other son's room next, the football room. So this room is the football room. So all things vintage football in blue. Um, so I wallpapered this room in this um, football wallpaper. We got a matching pillow and matching sheets. And um, the original drapes in the dining room were actually these. I got these made with a Greek key in the blue and to match the hydrangea drape wallpaper. And I just, it, it wasn't sitting right with me. And so I said, I want to put them in the football room when I did this room. And so that's perfect. Just a little blue Greek key trim on the D on um, all the drapes. And then these chairs um, were actually an estate sale find, which was perfect in here. So I did the gingham rug and um, the gingham chairs. And so that's perfect, uh, the blue on blue and the gingham on gingham. Uh, tones. So we did a little twin size bed um, for my younger son. Uh, the football sheets, as I mentioned, and then we did a monogram pillow, just like I did for my other son um, in an applique. So bringing in the light blue and the dark blue in the wallpaper. Um, gave the mirrors a little makeover. They were uh, uh, just like a cream color and painted those blue. Um, and then the nightstands are just like a vintage find. Um, and I have him all of these little boxes, storage boxes that he can keep all of his little treasures and toys and dinosaurs in. <laughs> and these are his favorite thing to do is to drive me crazy with these lamps that touch on and off. So great target find. My friend actually found these, I think at Goodwill for me, she found these football lamps. I think they're like old pottery wine or something. So he found little football lamps. Um, we did a custom ginger jar in here with our last name, and he loves dogs. So we did a little Staffordshire dog, other football artwork. Um, and then each of my boys has this little baby banner from like the day they were born with all of their birth stats as art. So that's really fun. Um, we also have other football art throughout the room. We did um, this little football field and vintage football players. So that's really sweet. So for me, home really means personal. I think there's a lot of idea out there that you should get your home ready and that you should keep it neutral for resale value. That you should design your home in a way that is applicable to all, to the masses, so that no one could be you know, offended or turned off by your home. And I think that's the opposite of making a house a home. Um, making a house a home is showcasing what you love, making it personal, hanging that wallpaper, getting custom furniture made, um, having monograms on your pillows, claiming it as your space so that it's really custom to you. Um, each of my sons have monogram pillows, so it's, you know, it's theirs, ownership of that room, um, cozy and warm and inviting. Um, that's what I think feels like home. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.